the book starts out with, uh, with lesson one. The, the lessons are all numbered. Uh, and lesson number one is that time is undefeated. Time is undefeated. I, I start with that lesson because I think so many of us, uh, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, waste too much time. We waste too much time. And life is so fleeting. And again, the, the, the older you get, the more chronologically gifted you are, you start to understand. I mean, I, I've heard people say this for years, and at a certain point, you understand what they mean when you say, where did, all, where, where did all the time go? Time is so fleeting, and so many of us don't understand that time is undefeated. You know, you are not going to get out of here alive. Time has never lost a battle. I had this epiphany when I turned 35. I tell this story in the book. When I turned 35, I was giving a lecture somewhere, and I don't remember even where I was or why I was lecturing that particular day, but for some reason, in the process of preparing for this lecture, it occurred to me that the life expectancy for a black man in America was 70 years of age, a number that's far too low, and thankfully over time is getting a little bit, little bit higher. But at the time that I was 35, turned 35, life expectancy for black men in this country was only 70 years of age. And it hit me like a ton of bricks in that moment on my 35th birthday that I had lived half of my life. Who at 35, when you're young and spry and still trying to get your grind on, still on your hustle, takes a moment to consider that at the age of 35, if my life expectancy is 70, I'm halfway there. And so by the time you turn 36 as a black man in this country, you realize you've got more time in the rearview mirror. There's more behind you than there is in front of you. And that epiphany hit me so, 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 so solidly and so significantly that it made me really start to think about what kind of life I wanted to live. And what am I going to do with the time I have left now that half of it is already behind me? I can tell you, it's a sobering thought. It's a sobering thought. And so just do a little research when you get home tonight. Uh, you can do it right where you're sitting there. Just take out your phone and Google it. And, 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 and for whatever your category is, see what the life expectancy is. And then see where you are on your journey. And figure out, not, figure out whether or not you are using your time as wisely as you ought to be using it. I, 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 I think all the time um, about friends who I've seen uh, at the end at the end of their lives. And sometimes you run to folk who will say to you that they would have taken better care of themselves, they would have done this, that, or the other if they had known that the end was gonna come at this particular point in time. Now, obviously, none of us knows when that moment's going to come. And this is not a talk about morbidity. It is a point uh, about the fact that time is undefeated. And at some point, we have to get serious about our journey and start to do everything we can every day we wake up um, to redeem the time that may have been lost in our lives. Another lesson in this book is called Spend Some Time in Stillness. Spend Some Time in, in Stillness. Uh, because so many of us find, again, ourselves always on the hustle, always on the grind. Um, I was afraid for a lot of years, I, I confess um, boldly, that for years I was afraid to even take any time off. We live in a world now where the competition for everything we do is so stiff that we're afraid to take some time, to spend some time in stillness because we can hear the footsteps in the dark. I don't want somebody to come take my position. I, I don't want my, I, I was afraid to go on vacation and have a guest host fill in for me for fear that when I got back, my seat might have been given to somebody else. And I only learned over time that it's spending time in stillness that the good ideas and the good energy starts to flow. So sometimes if you don't slow it down just a bit, then you don't get the momentum that you need, the good ideas you need to move you forward to the next level in your life. So I've learned the hard way how to spend some time in stillness.